A farmer understands the needs of every season, and so do Farm Bureau members. When Arkansas families needed electricity, our members brought it. Reliable roads, our members built them. The agricultural education, our members provided. Today's members may not live on a farm, but their connections are as close as ever. So when that difficult season comes, no member has to face it alone. For every season, Arkansas Farm Bureau. Join today. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, bear, man. I breathe the mountain. Hi, little Johnny Cash. Now, over the past few weeks, we've been talking about changes to Arkansas's workforce that employers say are needed to fill existing jobs and prepare for the jobs of tomorrow. One visionary who's been shaking up the system from his perch in West Memphis at Mid-South Community College is Dr. Glenn Finter. We welcome you to the program. Thank, Thank you for you being here. And I, I rolled a little Johnny Cash there because before we get into workforce, I want to talk about what you're doing with KWEM, a radio station. You got some national coverage this week from the New York Times. Give me the Cliff Notes version of what you're doing with this radio station. In the 1940s, early 50s, uh, this radio station was um, one of the most influential spots on the globe in terms of giving artists access to the general public. And the story, unfortunately, hasn't been told very well. But essentially, almost everything that we say happened in Memphis happened in West Memphis first. What Memphis, Tennessee's just done a much better job of telling the story than Arkansas. <laughs> We're talking has. Johnny Cash, B.B. King, Elvis, Elvis Presley. Presley. Uh, we've got a clip where B.B. King says he was picking cotton at noon. He would listen to KWEM. One day he quit pick, picking cotton, walked, hitchhiked to KWEM, walked in, said, I'm better than anybody you're playing. Put me on the radio. <laughs> and that's how it started. You going to spin this radio station off eventually? You'll well, keep it on campus? Well, the initial plan is to let our students get engaged in not only uncovering the history, but uh, telling the story. We've got a new digital media program that gives them access to web skills to audio and video recording skills that can put them to work. Uh, but eventually, we hope that it turns into a, a, a for-profit tourism effort uh, because we believe, based on the response we're getting, that people all over the globe want to know more about that story. All right, good transition to workforce here. So you and I have talked about the need to overhaul the state's workforce training program. Let, talk to me about the disconnect that you see from your perspective between what happens in high school with the kids that are just not motivated to finish to these jobs that do exist out there that they're capable of filling and what you're doing to do that? Well, the educational model as we know it today has really not morphed with our new global economy. And uh, we're in 1978 when I graduated from Charleston High School. I could go to Fort Smith, go to work at Baldor, Whirlpool, uh, Riverside, Ream, and have a good job. Had a great middle class existence. The problem is those jobs don't exist today in our economy. They require a skill set that we're not providing access to for our students in high school. And so many of them come out of the high school model and they're not prepared to do anything to support themselves or anyone else and fall off into this dark abyss that uh, we very often can't recover them from. But you've had some success with the program that you've done that integrates them into your college uh, in their junior years even as, as far back in high school? Actually, we uh, have been involved in the secondary workforce center model that the state of Arkansas has been supporting for decades. Unfortunately, we haven't been supporting it very robustly and uh, it has certainly never manifested itself in the, to the extent that it could be changing Arkansas's economy as it really truly can. What we've done is taken one step further. We just became the first uh, conversion charter ever granted to a community college, partnering that college with a high school, our West Memphis public school system. We'll actually be bringing students on our campus as early as the eighth grade for an experience to get them attuned to what options are available. The ninth grade, they'll be taking a seminar course. And in the 10th grade, they can start being on our campus for as long as two hours a day. And in many cases, have them graduate high school with a nationally recognized certification in a number of areas that can put them straight to work. And how much could they make in some of the jobs that we're talking about here? Well, some of the jobs will start out at anywhere from $10, $12 an hour, and some lead to careers that are of middle class income level. Uh, the, the beauty of this skill shortage is it lets, it lets you take new educational models and create job opportunities for regions such as Eastern Arkansas that really have never had the number of middle income jobs that we needed for our economy. All right, last question for you. So what needs to dramatically change to 
meet the needs that you see that are out there and really turn this whole workforce education program Arkansas inside Arkansas has a number of leaders that recognize this as a problem. Unfortunately, none of them have really been able to crack the, the code. But what Arkansas needs to do is start examining its educational components as a system instead of different silos. The idea that K-12 and post-secondary education and higher education and workforce all should be separate is an outdated model. We've got to put those things together. Think about J, or excuse me, P through J, pre-K through a job, and educate people to be productive citizens. Do we need a workforce czar? Do we need somebody that can slice through the bureaucracy, make some tough decisions, and not have to worry about the political consequences? Well, I know a number of states and large communities across the nation that are adopting just that model, saying we're, we can't continue to do what we're doing and expect different results, and understanding that the bureaucracies can't fix themselves, you gotta find somebody that understands the bureaucracies, who understands what we've got to get to as an outcome and is willing to take the political heat to make that happen. All right, so you're saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, what I'm telling you is that's what we need. All right, Glenn Fenner, he is the president of Mid-South Community College in West Memphis. Thank you for being here, Thank I appreciate you. you.